glimpsing into the future live. This is Rockspace's continuing coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. Now here's Robert Scoble. Hey, I'm Robert Scoble and you're here at the Rackspace Startup Zone or Studio at TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. We're uh, all day long we're interviewing interesting innovators who are playing with the future, trying to build the future actually. Uh, most of them are uh, build, building for Google Glass, but uh, we've, we've had a variety of different companies on the set here. Anyways, uh, we got another one who's building something for the camera that'll look at the sentiment of people that's looking back at you. So let's get into it right now. Who are you? I'm Kathleen Voss. I'm a student at Stanford. Um, and uh, I'm working on a company called Sension, uh, which I started while at Stanford, originally from Germany, and then spent some time out here uh, basically building face tracking technology um, that we use in the education space to make videos interactive. And we kind of found that basically by porting a very, very lightweight face tracker to glass, we could you know, basically train basic emotions on other people looking at you and thereby help people uh, with medical disorders and help people with autism. Well, this is important for me because my son, my six-year-old son is autistic. And one th he has a few problems because of autism. One, he can't look in your eyes. So it's really hard for him to look in somebody's eyes for a long period of time. And that, that's an important social cue that we rely right. on to build trust and friendship and all that stuff. But then he can't read, are you getting angry or are you happy, are you sad? Partly because he's not even looking at you, right? Yeah. But partly because uh, his brain is just not good at picking up those social cues and, uh, and that keeps him from uh, really interacting with people well, right? True. So I, I expect that by the time he's 20, where he's gonna be at in school, he's gonna have something on his face like this Google Glass that's gonna help him live his life and help him I integrate into society better? Is that, is that right? Is that yeah, where that, you're I thinking? Yeah, I think that's, that's sort of what we're envisioning. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily about wearing it all the time and wearing it every day. It I do, might. so why not it, him? It certainly might be. <laughs> ah, exactly. Like for, for you, that might be totally comfortable. You know, I don't know about everyone else. There might be people who would rather, you know, wear it for three months and, you know, go through some sort of training. Kind of the, the problem with, and, and I guess you must know this, the way kind of people, uh, people like your son learn on emotions right now is they do it in almost a lab-like setting. Yeah. Right? They do flashcards, they do some games, they do, you know, sometimes they bring relatives, they look at photos. But the way I smile and the way you smile look very different. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what we were doing is sort of, we're trying to, so those two problems as kind of two steps. The first step is, you know, helping autistic patients actually, you know, actually recognize emotions in other people's faces. And that's just kind of going of the outward glass camera. It'll tell you when I'm looking at you, or, you know, as, as long as you are in my view field of glass, I don't even have to be fully looking at you. Yep. It'll tell me, you know, it'll find the face, it'll pores normalize the shape in the face. So it doesn't matter kind of which way you're looking and it'll tell you happy, it'll tell you sad. Um, and the second step is kind of how to respond to that. Um, and we're focusing on the first one right now, and that's kind of where we think glass has a lot of potential. Yeah, it's really interesting. So you're just using the outward facing camera. You're not using too many of the sensors other than the camera right now, right? No, not right now. So we're, we, we might eventually get interested in using sound as well. That's kind of a, a component to that. So, um, but that's, you know, we're, we're a computer vision company. We started out building face tracking technology in order to make educational content more interactive, in order for devices to become more responsive to kind of how you look at them and how you interact with them. And glass is a natural extension of that interface, wise. Um, but, you know, that, that's, that's what we're focusing on. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch as developers like you uh, use the different sensors. For instance, there's an eye sensor that's watching where I'm looking, right? Uh, it's a crude eye sensor right now. It's 16 by 16 infrared eye sensor watching my yeah. pupil. But you could match that up with your app to tell whether my son's looking back at the subject he's actually supposed to be looking at, right? Exactly. Yeah, we absolutely could. It's right, so right now, you know, kind of the, the work we've done has been mostly around expression stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if you, you know, kind of can see this, but that's like the, that's the kind of the tracker we use right now. It's based on top of sort of the state of the art of face tracking, which is yep. called the constrained local model. And we kind of, we just use the outward camera to, as so you take that shape, no matter how I'm looking, and normalize it at post and scale. 
such that you know the, the emotion is not dependent based on how close I am to you and what kind of my pose is. Right. Um, and then we use that to kind of use a geometric approach to figure out, oh, you're surprised, you're happy, you know, those yep. sorts of things. Now, how, does it show up on screen that it senses that you're happy or sad? Oh, no, we have stuff off that on glass. Oh, you know, okay. I'll, I'll sh we can show it on the glass. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of that, sort of the, the state of the art of emotion recognition uh, right now is about as accurate as a three-year-old. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's not as accurate as a psychologist. And we're focusing on kind of getting the four to five emotions that are kind of crucial to work really, really solidly. Yeah. Um, and in real time, that's kind of a core requirement. We don't want you to post-process it, which is, oh yeah, I can use you know, the most amazing texture-driven emotion recognition algorithm in the world if you're giving me a two minute video and 30 minutes to process it. We want to do it in real time on the glass, you know, without having to go back and forth, interact with the server. Now, this is not face uh, recognition. This no. doesn't tell me your name when I'm looking at you. It just tells me, are you happy or sad, and gives me some social cues to help me deal with you, right, if I'm an yeah. autistic uh, person. Yeah, exactly. That's really interesting. It, you know, once it gets hooked up with uh, face recognition, if Google ever gets Exactly. Uh, so that's kind of the limiting factor yeah. here. Is if we want to get more devices from Google to do beta testing, we start doing recognition stuff. You know. Yeah. They're, well, they're they already said it's banned right, for yeah, right now exactly. doing the recognition. So. But face detection like this, I've seen other companies do. Uh, they can already tell what age you are and whether you're male or female. Yeah. So now my autistic son always loves hugging everybody, right? And that puts him in danger because yeah. he can be preyed on by a predator. Well, here he could get a social cue. No, this is not appropriate behavior to exhibit with this yeah. person, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's 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 something we're doing. That they, again, sort of the approach we're we're taking at that is, is, you know, right now it's been mostly a geometric one. Uh, so the idea there is that, you know, different different cognitive features, kind of are different person by person. Yeah. So not only is the shape in your face different, but also the way you know you move your eyebrows is different. The way yeah. You move your face. Is this is this technology going to evolve to the place where I can tell if you're lying to me or, uh, you know, because a professional is looking at micro tells and and how your eyes move and that, you know to to tell whether you're telling the truth or not. Right? You know, it, it's gonna it's gonna get a lot more. It's gonna have to get a lot more dense than that. Kind of right now, we're looking at 78 points. We might have to look at a few more to be able to do that sort of stuff. Yeah. We're starting to get some stuff around the cheeks. And stuff. So could it help you play poker, right? And yeah, tell, I mean, is your you friend know, lying to you right now or not? You know, that, that's that. You know, that's that's things you might look at and kind of in, in, in a while from now. It's, you know, we, we, you know, if there's somebody out there who says they can do it, we would love to hire them. Yeah. Wow. So it, right now, it's an R and D project at Stanford. Right? Or no, is this going to actually be a company that... We are running? a company. And okay. uh, sort of our, our customers lie within the education space. Um, so that's kind of off glass. As we started out as basically measuring what we call an engagement score. As to figure out whether people are interested in content on the screen or not. And adapt content based on that. So our original vision was, you know, I was in a flipped classroom class at Stanford. We would have to watch lectures before coming to class. And it sucked. Um, because it was boring, yeah. uh, and because instructors didn't get feedback on how bad it was. Yeah. So what we did was we basically built a way you know, for you to watch a video using an iPad or an iPhone or whatever. And if you're drifting away and you're not paying attention, the thing will ask you a question. Depending on how you answer the question, it'll jump to a different sequence and explain the concept that you've missed. Um, and in the same way, it also aggregates that data across all the people viewing the content and provides that back to educators. So that's, that's kind of the market we have traction and customers in right now. Uh, and as part of that, we realized, you know, we just built very, very lightweight face tracking tech that worked on an iPhone and a cheap Android phone. Why not get it to run on glass? And it turns out, oh, yeah, we can do that. It's, it's really interesting meeting guys like you who are uh, trying to see extra signal in the world and trying to uh, use the existing sensors to see that signal. I think that's really it interesting stuff. It's going to be an interesting part of the future. I think Google's building a whole contextual OS and having those signals of people around you, are they happy, are they sad, um, can feed into you know the OS of the future that'll tell 
the system. What what kind of crowd are you at? Yeah. Are you are you having a conversation? Are you just at a bar where everybody's happy? You know, on and on. I I think that's going to be an interesting thing to watch. So I mean, that's that's kind of our you know, that's kind of our play. We want to build. In the, in the long, long, long run, we want to build a more visual interface. And there's going to happen a lot around kind of the sensors integrated into the devices. We're going to probably see depth cameras built into tablets at some point. Yep. We're probably going to see you know, IR cameras that are going to you know, allow us to do more accurate stuff with gaze in terms of where you're actually looking. Um, but we, we see computer vision as a key component to you know, determining how you respond to the device you're using. Yeah. And we think computing as a whole needs to get a lot more effective. You know, like a, like a touch screen is pretty close to a good and natural interface, but it's still miles far away if you think of how computing could be if, they were, you know, if it actually responded to your mood and the way you felt about things. Could this be turned into a new kind of dating game? I mean, it, it's not, you know. Because I could get be getting points for, you know, making you happy, uh, making you smile. I could get anti points if you're uh, like, that's a stupid joke, you know. <laughs> you know, the, so part part of part of that is going to be kind of left up to all the developers in the world who are going to imagine this sort of stuff. Yeah, that's probably not something that we're going to build right now. Yeah, um, but you know, are you building this as a platform then? We're uh, building it as a platform. So yeah, I we could, have. Add this technology into my app. And yeah, then... we, we haven't, uh, you know, we haven't formally a, a, announced anything there yet. But we yeah. have a. Uh, it's early our, days. Our, our yeah. current customers use an iOS SDK, for instance, yeah. and a web SDK to do this sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, it's going to be fun to watch what you guys do, and thanks for coming out. All right. And thanks for to me. Uh, where can I watch your work uh, as, as this evolves? Well, Are so you we're, on Twitter. Facebook, yeah, I'm on Twitter at my humble self. Okay. Um, I'm at Ascension.co. Um, Facebook.com slash Ascension Technology. Um, you know. Very cool. That's, that's Thank you so much for coming out and showing this. Thanks a lot. So th this is the kind of stuff we're seeing over the next, uh, well, there's w one day left, right? We're doing a contest in the morning where we're going to give a, a developer $10,000 for having the best uh, wearable technology demonstration. Um, and we're seeing different innovators, different companies uh, showing us what the future could look like. Uh, from TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back in uh, a little while, half an hour or so, with uh, another interview. Seeing into the future live. Rackspace's continuous coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013 will continue in a moment. You've got code to write. Let us manage the rest. Find out more at rackspace.com.